Welcome back to another episode of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. I'm Craig Hanley, one of your co-hosts, along with Gary Reasons. Gary, how you doing this week? Oh, it's been a great week, Craig. It's been a lot of fun. Um, our producer here, Seth Biley, and I, we just uh, finished up a trip last night, uh, actually from Southern Illinois, and we'll talk all about that. It's been a great week and uh, been a whole lot of fun. Your on-campus trips are tremendous, Gary. Seth Biley and, and Graham Bell are our producers of FCS Delivered. And you could, where can you find us? Well, we're on many podcast platforms. There's Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. You might be watching right now on our YouTube channel. If you haven't been watching, you can watch. Uh, go to YouTube and, and search for FCS Delivered. Now, in today's episode and we're moving into week four of the regular season we'll talk about an eventful week three we'll talk about where's gary and his trip to southern illinois this past week and we'll set up week four now gary last week you went to the university of idaho idaho to present our uh special teams player of the week uh R ricardo chavez with his award and you had props from idaho they really set you up and you brought some back, yeah, of oh, course. It's a lot well, of fun here. You I, know, I've, had I props all, I've had props all along, Gary. Right behind me, there's a picture of a lot of football players in Superman costumes. And one of them is uh, you, Gary. You might remember, <laughs> I hope so. So tell us about wow. how did that come about? Wow, that is uh, uh, from way back when. That picture was taken outside of the... Uh, Rose Bowl in Pasadena. This is the day before Super Bowl 21 with us, the New York football giants playing the Denver Broncos. And this actually, this backdrop, this picture is a, it's a photograph that I had created and used in a fundraising capacity for the United Way of Greater New York. And uh, it became a backer force poster. Um, that's uh, way back in the day. Uh, don't have an image of that poster to show you right here, but Craig's showing you one of the actual images that we had from one of the outtakes and uh, had a chance to sign it for him way back when. But uh, that's pretty cool, Craig. I, I, like, I like to see that you're uh, keeping up there. That's all my linebacker mates back in the day with the New York Giants back in 1986. So who would ever think that a 1987 photo would show up in a 2023 podcast? Oh, and by the way, we didn't know what a podcast was back then. So, <laughs> well, well, time travel allows that now. So <laughs> I'm glad I have props here, just like you. Now, that was your trip to Idaho. Now, the FedEx ground uh, game of the week for, for, for the past week, it was the right one. Southern Illinois pulled out a 26-25 win at Southeast Missouri. It was the second straight year this game, the War of the Wheel rivalry. It came down to a game-winning touchdown in the, in the back of the end zone. The visiting team did it. This time it was Nick Baker thrown to Isaiah Hartrup. Southern Illinois pulled it out. And you wound up making the trip to Southern Illinois. Tell us about your trip for the FedEx Ground on-campus awards. Well, it was. It was a great, great uh, chance to go out there and visit. And the energy that's on campus uh, Southern Illinois is now three and zero, and it was a great. It's a great rivalry game, you know. So you talk about that that program and those two programs, and they're separated by the mighty Mississippi River. Those those programs are just forty five miles apart, and I think we've got an image here of, of kind of what they're playing for. This is exactly what we want to talk about because it's the war of the wheel, and so you see a couple of mascots here holding it, and guess what? Yours truly got to hold that thing there right on campus. So I had a chance to hold that because the Salukis brought it back to their, their facility and uh, I had a chance to look at it. So uh, it was really cool. I really enjoyed the visit. We'll talk more about the game and, and the visit here in segment two, but uh, I really enjoyed that. And the War of the Wheel, it's one of those trophy games that's all across the FCS. And I saw the one at Idaho last week and got a hold of the jug. So. You know, that's pretty cool with them in, in Montana. So I, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fun to start these things up live and in person. Well, one of the great things with week three, we talked about last week was the rivalry games, non-conference. There were three that had over 90 meetings. Southern Illinois, Southeast Missouri was one. The, the battle uh, for the real HU, Hampton beat uh, Howard. 
and then the Mid-America Classic, Eastern Illinois uh, edged Illinois State. And what was great about those three games, and we spotlighted, all of them were decided by one point. And, and late uh, fourth quarter heroics, too. So what a week for non-conference rivalries that have just uh, lasted for years. And, and it was great to see. And, and I'm glad you got to go see uh, the War of the, uh, of the Wheel winner. Now, week three was very eventful, as we mentioned. Uh, we had another FBS uh, upset. Give us your thoughts on Sacramento State beating Stanford 30-23. to 23. Well, Sacramento State, we saw them arise at Craig a year ago. We think that the, I thought that they were a much better team improved last year. This has continued here in 2023. Not really surprised that they had a great effort out there. That's a big win once again. And I, I just see them as one of these teams that is is just building a great program and I just, just applaud what they're doing. And so getting an FBS win is something that they're going to be able to carry into the, the rest of the season. And it may come in down to a decision about – what type of quality of schedule you have when there may be some at-large picks for the, the FCS playoffs. So that's a huge win there for, for Sac State. You mentioned last year, I mean, Sacramento State did get to the next level, won their first uh, playoff game ever in the FCS playoffs. Obviously, Troy Taylor was their coach at the time. He won our Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year Award in, in 2019. Now he's coaching Stanford. So Andy Thompson took th this team that – uh, Troy Taylor helped build and, and, and beat them on the farm against Stanford. So what a storyline there. And, and that brought change in our, our stats reform FCS top 25 poll, which of course is presented by FedEx Ground. Sacramento State has moved up to number four. It's the first time since the preseason there's been any change in the top four. As you know, South Dakota State is number one. North Dakota State's number two. Montana State is number three. Now we have the Hornets, number four, William & Mary, number five. Great to see a little movement and great to see a team rewarded like Sacramento State. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think the movement in the poll kind of shows everybody that we're kind of on top of it and focused on, in on those movements and, and, and rewarding some of that, that exemplary play. And good job to move up Sac State in, in the rankings. Yeah, they're uh, one of six big sky teams. That's the most for any conference in, in the FCS. The Missouri Valley and the CAA both have five teams in the national rankings. But I think what's great is nine of the 13 FCS conferences are represented in the top 25, and, and nine of the 11 scholarship conferences are represented. So it just shows you the widespread uh, talent out there, talented teams, players, great to see. Now, one of the other uh, big games of the weekend was, was an 0-2 versus 0-2 matchup, Gary. It was uh, Eastern Illinois hosting Southeastern Louisiana. Two terrific teams. Southeastern Louisiana was actually ranked number 19. Despite being 0-2, they had played two FBS teams. East, Eastern Washington, which is a blue blood program, they had lost to North Dakota State and then an FBS program. That's almost like playing two FBS programs. And that kind of makes me wonder, Gary, your thoughts on non-conference schedules leading into your conference season. We see a lot of different things. Southeastern Louisiana and, and Eastern Washington schedules really stood out this year for the difficulty of how you attack the preseason of your conference play. You know, this, this Craig, it's not something that you can really control as a coaching staff and really a, a, as an organization because – you know, these schedules are somewhat set two, three, four years in advance, especially if you're looking to build in an FBS opponent early in that mix, because those games are scheduled out at least a couple of years in advance. So it might just be your your delta hand that you, you may not have signed up for uh, and have to go out and play one of these FBS teams that if you do that early in the season, it may be some revenue generation for the program that, is, that you, know, you might need. And, but when you get to a level, I think when you're, what you're seeing in, in, in the big sky and the NBC, what those teams are doing, that they're able to kind of withstand because they're, they're very, very stable programs. And some of the others need the revenue from the FBS opponents, which they, which they typically get. Um, and so there's, there's a balance there, of what is happening with, with scheduling. But should you do that for your program? Uh, if you can get away from playing the FBS schools and play high level or good, good opponents at the FCS level that are non-conference opponents, I think those are great. Uh, you know, we do have, a, you know, some at large opportunities at the FCS level to get entry into the playoffs. 
And so those are things that the committee looks at as far as strength of schedule, who your opponents were, as well as, you know, kind of what your, your accolades were throughout the, the course of the season as to possible giving you an at-large bid. So I do feel that the, the stronger that you can do in non-conference play, whether it's going to be against FBS opponents or a strong FCS opponent, it should give you something towards the end of the season for those, those uh, decision makers to look at as far as potential entry into the FCS playoffs. Yeah, you know, the, the selection committee, as you mentioned, really isn't supposed to uh, have it as a negative if you lose to an FBS opponent. I mean, the, the, you know, if you, if you play close, if you pull an upset, that really boosts your resume, but it's not supposed to be held against you. So I think you could almost, you know, throw out a loss against an FBS when you're looking come playoff time at resumes. But again, you don't want to have too many losses on your resume. Otherwise, you're not going to get seated. And everybody knows you want to be seated to, to have those home playoff games. Uh, it's an easier path to Frisco, Texas, where the national championship is held. So I think it is a fine line. Now, let me ask you this. If you're in a conference that's eight, you have an eight-game conference schedule, and you have three non-conference games, in a typical year where you play 11 games, some years you can play 12, but if you're playing 11, if you have three uh, non-conference games, what, what kind of mix are you really thinking as far as tough? How many should be tough out of those three games in your eyes? Uh, I would say at least one, possibly two uh, teams that need to, to, you know, to get that. I like early in the season for a team to find their identity and find out who you are, what you are. You're trying to get the X's and O's and the execution of those things in place so that you're when you get to conference play, you're going to be prepared and you're not going to have these stumblings that you would have early in the season. And, you know, that's becoming prepared. So you use the, the non-conference schedule, the early season games as, as, as a stepping stone to get prepared for conference play. Really nothing more than that. Uh, and so, there, you know, there's, there may be teams out there that are 0-3 at this point of the season, and they still have a full conference schedule ahead of them, and that's all they're looking to, to be able to potentially, A, win the conference, or B, you know, have a, have a great season in conference and maybe not win and maybe get, get, get tied for around the top to, to get, get into the playoffs. So there's something to be said about, you know, just <laughs> getting through the, the non-conference play but being very, very laser focused, I think, on, on your conference schedule. That would be, you know, Southeastern Louisiana as a, as a perfect example. They're 0-3. They shared the conference title last year with, with uh, Incarnate Word, UIW. They probably have to, to win out now, as you mentioned, and which they can do. Southeastern Louisiana is a, is a tremendous program. Actually, we're the preseason favorite in the Southland Conference, but there's probably no... Uh, stum stumbles anymore after after having an 0 3 start. Too tough as a schedule, probably. Maybe two out of three would have been would have been better for them. But you know, you're right about you know uh, FBS games bring revenue, and they, and they chose to play two, and then the tough third row game at that Eastern Washington. So we'll see. I mean, a team like Montana State played a South Dakota State, lost in a great game, and came down to the end, 20 to 16, and and didn't even drop in the polls. So it just shows you you aren't necessarily penalized by losing against a very tough opponent. And, and we all want to see these kind of games, as you mentioned. So great talk about non-conference schedules, because one of the things we'll be talking about later in the show is we're moving, basically moving into conference play. And that that's the big portion of our season. So we're going to take a break here, Gary, and we will be back with more FCS delivered sponsored presented by FedEx ground. Rehearsals for the school play were really coming along. Bigger smile, Mr. Squirrel. Until a custodian accidentally threw away the costumes. Oh, no. Everyone was rattled. Miss Garrity forgot how to play. And the queen of the hedgehogs almost quit. Find a new queen. But replacement costumes were shipped with FedEx. And with added peace of mind from picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. We're into our FedEx Ground National Players and Team of the Week segment. Where's Gary? Because Gary, of course, is making on weekly on-campus visits 
to present one of the national awards. This week, the third uh, week of the season, I think it was the third different time zone for Gary. He's really been all over the United States and, and, and FCS Nation. Now, as we look back to the week three awards, uh, our, our defensive player of the week was Nate Lynn, uh, the defensive end at William & Mary. He just led a completely dominant effort uh, in a win over uh, Charleston Southern. And Nate was part of an effort that only gave up 77 offensive yards and not, not a single offensive uh, point. So then we had special teams, Gary. Yeah, Connor Brooksby had a great game for Utah Tech in their in their win, fifty to thirty six over Northern Arizona. The young man, you know, pretty good, pretty good game. Five of five field goals, including you know a couple of forty eight yarders, and all in, he's had twenty points in the football game. So he became the program's all time leading scorer. So congratulations to Connor with a great uh, great job against Utah Tech with Utah Tech. Then our FedEx Ground uh, FCS. National Freshman Player of the Week was Nigel Henderson, the cornerback for Stonehill, a young program. They had their second straight road victory for the first time on the Division III level. They won 23-20 at, at Georgetown. Nigel had four solo tackles. He had a, a key late force fumble that helped uh, Stonehill really run out the clock and, and get their second straight road win. Nigel Henderson was our Freshman of the Week. Yeah, and the team of the week, Craig, we'll jump in here. We've already talked about it a little bit here. Sacramento State got that nod as the FCS uh, National Team of the Week with their 30-23 win over Stanford. It's the 12th straight road win that they've had and, and their fourth FBS win uh, oh, you know, since 2011 for against an FBS opponent. So congratulations to Sac State as the, the National Team of the Week. And, and then one of our awards we also kind of alluded to earlier, our, our FedEx Ground FCS National Offensive Player of the Week was Nick Baker, quarterback for Southern Illinois. He led that comeback win in the War of the Wheel at uh, Southeast Missouri. Just a tremendous game, 458 uh, passing yards, three touchdowns, and over 400 yards in the second half alone. So Nick Baker was our Offensive Player of the Week, Gary. Yeah, and I had a chance to go out and visit with Nick and his teammates, and uh, it was it was a great event. And you know, Seth Biley is our producer here. He and I, we both went down to Carbondale, Illinois, to have a have a great visit. And it was one of those things to where you look at Carbondale; it's in South Illinois. And really didn't know where we were going, but the campus is absolutely beautiful. And they are the Salukis, and the Salukis is obviously a, a breed of dog, and they they are the dogs. It's a beautiful campus, and it's a great place for athletics. They've got tremendous athletic facilities. So Wookie Stadium, really one of those premium stadiums that you have in middle America there in Southern Illinois, and it is a place to play. And so the so Wookiees have a great tradition and great pride. They've got numerous players that have played in the National Football League, and it's something that uh, they take a whole lot of pride in. With Nick Baker winning the award here from FedEx Ground, they've already got it on the scoreboard and it's gonna run all week long. You can see the tradition that they have here with all of their Hall of Famers. And they just put all of this stuff on display because they are prideful of their program. And the Salukis, boy, I tell you, they welcomed us well. I had a chance to visit with all the players in, in, our, in our little presentation here. And I think they really enjoyed uh, hearing from me and discussing a little bit about the things going on at the FCS level. They love their quarterback, Nick Baker. When he comes into the room and uh, in a standard little T-shirt, they wanted him to be out there. But you know, this is a little bit of, of game footage here from from the ball game where they they won that wheel. And uh, you know, here's just a little bit of action, and it's fun to see these guys actually play these games. And it's just huge plays, touchdown here to Davis, and pretty interesting to see how uh, Nick Baker is is a big time quarterback. Not a big guy; he's only five nine but really, really jazzed up. And these two fan bases, Craig, are two, two communities that really, you know, they're, like we said, we talked about earlier, they're, they're only 45 miles apart and really close. That's the game ending touchdown there to uh, Hartrip. You get that win. That happened after a Geno Hess fumble. They recovered it with one minute 38 to go. And then Nick Baker took them down the field and got that touchdown at the end of the game. What a huge win and a rivalry matchup, the war of the wheel. And the wheel goes back to Southern Illinois University. And I had a chance to visit with them all about it and, and make the presentation to, to Nick Baker coming up here to, to get this award. Bill Elliott there standing from FedEx Ground. 
uh, will have a chance to join us and visit with the team as well. But this is a great chance to visit with them. And Nick is a very humble quarterback. He doesn't like attention. He's one of those guys that just kind of deflects any positive attention. And what a great teammate. And he did see the exuberance that he has. He's, a, he's one of those guys that you want to play with, you want to play for. And he's a sixth-year man on campus. So Nick Baker was our FedEx ground national offensive player of the week and had a, had a great week. You know, Gary, watching the video week to week, it, it almost feels like, uh, you know, from a distance, I'm, I'm there on campus with you. I mean, these videos are tremendous, Gary. Uh, really enjoy them when you go visit a university. And, and it, it just, the award that, that we're doing each week and the on-campus visit, just tremendous. I'm, I'm, you know, if you're not watching on YouTube and you're using a podcast platform, take a look also on our YouTube channel for FCS Delivery because all of our uh, videos from, from these on-campus videos are there, and, and we actually put them into the podcast. So, Gary, it's just so fun to see. Now, I do have a question for you watching that. I mean, we're talking Nick Baker, their quarterback, our, our FedEx Ground FCS National Offensive Player of the Week. There's another Nick there who's a big one on campus, Nick Hill, their football coach. And he, he's an alum, for, former quarterback, one of the greats in program history. He's only 38. He's been coaching there for, for, for a number of years now and, and the head coach. Tell me about that, your experience through the years with a school when they hire an alum, how important that is, how much of a difference maker it is. And it's not just football. You can, you can say that in any sport, uh, hiring an alum. What's your thoughts on Nick Hill and just hiring an alum? Well, hiring an alum for a university gives you a guy who has uh, a lot of heart and he, he has a... Uh, a true passion. So there's no question about dedication and commitment to the program. And so Nick uh, had a chance to visit with him and, and you could really tell that he just loves Southern Illinois University, obviously grew up there. All, all the things that lead to having him be a, a part of that program at a very young age, became their head coach. He was only a coach two years in high school prior to get, becoming the head coach at Southern Illinois University, a football player that had come through there. He has all of those intangibles. And now I think that at this point in his career as a football coach, he has gotten this program to where it is one of the elite programs. And I think that that is something to credit him with and also understand that there's going to be a lot more accolade coming potentially his way and their, that football team's way as they move through this season. I think they are one of the, the top programs out there and it, it, it was on display. So, you know, my third visit overall, we went first to Morgan State, went to Baltimore. I went all the way to the West Coast, essentially to, to Idaho, uh, and then right to the middle of the country. And we went to uh, basically to Southern Illinois. We flew into St. Louis and drove down a couple hours. And it is two hours drive, complete, trust me on this. It's all the way down to Carbondale in, uh, in Southern Illinois. So a lot of fun and those things. And, and just it's just just an amazing uh, opportunity to go on campus, Craig. And these programs, they are really welcoming us to come in there and share about these things. And, and I, we love to talk about them here on this on this show. And, and they tie right into our opening segment where we talk about tough schedules. The Salukis really challenged themselves with three tough games. And here they are, 3-0, and number 12 ranked in our, in our stats reform FCS, FCS top 25 poll. Just off to a great start. So really enjoyed watching this visit to Southern Illinois to present the National Offensive Player of the Week Award to uh, Nick Baker, their quarterback. We're going to take one more break, and then we'll be back to, to for our final segment of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Brown. When someone accidentally threw away the school play costumes, Oh, no. Replacements were shipped with FedEx. And with picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Do you like what you're hearing on FCS Delivered today? For more national FCS coverage, please go to theanalyst.com throughout the week. We're the home for the FCS Top 25 Media Poll and the weekly and season-ending FCS National Awards presented by FedEx Ground. We also take you across FCS Nation with stories, predictions, and an inside look. The FCS coverage can be found at theanalyst.com. Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. Gary Reasons and 
myself, Craig Haley, we're here to talk week four of the FCS college football season. And really, Gary, conference play is really taking off. We mentioned a lot of uh, teams play eight, uh, eight game uh, conference schedule, so they've played three non-conference games already. Are you ready for conference uh, schedules? Oh, I'd love to. Love to get these games going because they're the most important. You know, who's going to be uh, the top dog in the conference? You know, it all starts now. <laughs> well, there is one school that that's still uh, in non-conference play this week. Dartmouth is hosting uh, Lehigh. Uh, the Ivy League's in their second week. Unlike the rest of the FCS, they have a later state start. Dartmouth announced Tuesday evening that Buddy Tevens, uh, their longtime head coach, had passed away. Uh, Buddy was 66 years old. Uh, he had been involved in an off-season bicycle accident. His wife, uh, Kristen, uh, said at the time that his right leg was amputated. He suffered some spinal cord injuries. And, and Coach Tevens took a break from coaching this year. One of his assistants, Sammy McCorkle, took over. Very tough no news for all of football. And, and you know, Coach Stevens was even uh, mentioned uh, by Commissioner Goodell at this year's NFL draft because Buddy was a innovator in player safety and protection, especially with pr uh, concussion uh, prevention. He hired the first female coach in Division One college football history. Really sad news for, for Dartmouth and, and football in general. Buddy Stevens passes. Uh, passing Gary. Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough loss for for Dartmouth and obviously the football community. And yeah, you, you're right on, Craig. He uh, he impacted a lot of people, a lot of lives, and and really the whole game itself. Yes, uh, buddy. You know he coached 22 years uh, at Dartmouth over two stints because he went off and also coached at Tulane and, and Stanford. He won five Ivy League championships. But really, just uh, the grace of, of of him as a man and and what he did you know, for player safety uh, and the coaching ranks. Just, you know, very sad news out of Dartmouth. Our condolences go to his family and to, you know, Dartmouth's uh, greater family. Now, as we mentioned, week four, uh, it's really, you know, a lot of conference games. You know, the Big Sky opening schedule is really elite, Gary. Now, there's also five games, count them five, that are ranked teams versus a, another ranked team within our Stats Reform FCS Top 25 poll. So. We're making them our, our pick em, uh, segment this week, Gary. And it all starts all right, with, with yeah, Mercer, number 21, is at number eight, Furman. Who do you have in the SOCON there? Well, I, I'm have to going to go with the home team here with Furman. I think their quarterback, Tyler Huff, is going to give them a little bit of an edge. And uh, I, I, think that, I think that Furman gets it done, Craig. Yeah, you know, they did win last year, 23-13 uh, over Mercer. They kept Mercer to its lowest point total of the year and we know Mercer with with Devron Harper and Ty James that, that dynamic duo at wide receiver can just light up the scoreboard so I agree I think it's a tough game Tyler Huff is really getting it done for the uh for uh Furman so I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you there now we move to the CAA uh number 11 uh New Hampshire is at number 19 Delaware Woo! I think of Delaware at home I think physical play I think this is gonna be a tight game yeah, I think it's going to be a tight game, but I do like Delaware, as you said, at home. I think that they're going to get it. But, uh, you know, with New Hampshire, they're going to have somebody out there on the field. Dylan Lobby has done a great job, all-purpose yardage in this in this in his season, 274 yards. That's an, on average every week. But uh, so Dylan Lobby may have something to say about it, but I do have uh, Delaware at home. <laughs> well, Gary, I'm going to I'm going to stick with New Hampshire because any team that has Dylan Lobby. Hard to go against it. And you're right about uh, Delaware at home. I think they're 14-3 and three at home this decade. They're tough to beat there. I do think it comes down to the end, but I'm going to go with, with the fighting lobbies, uh, the Wildcats in New Hampshire. Now, uh, another game in the CAA, uh, Rhode Island, which has been very impressive. They're 2-0 and in league play already. They, they got an early start. They're 17th ranked. They're at number uh, 25, Villanova. I think I'm going to go with Villanova at home, but boy, you know, URI, URI could be 3-0 and before we know it in, in the CAA. Well, they could be, but I don't know that they're going to be. I'm going to take go with you, Craig. I'm going to go with Villanova at home to, to be there. You know, they got the, they can throw the ball down the field. And they've got a deep running back uh, pool there. So there's going to be some opportunity here for Villanova to get on top in this one, and I, and I think that they're, going to, they're going to get the W. 
The Big Sky, Gary, I, I talked about how elite their opening week schedule is, and, and the next two are from the Big Sky. Uh, number three, Montana State is at number 10, Weber State, which is, whew, you think back to last year, that game, Montana State only won because Weber State had four safeties where their, their snapper, their long snapper, snapped the ball over the puncher's head in the rain on a terrible weather day and allowed uh, Montana State to come back. Are you, are you thinking Bobcats or are you thinking Wildcats? Oh, boy. I tell you, I'm going to have to go with the number one rushing attack in the FCS, and that's Montana State. They're, they're going to be able to run the football. That's what they do. That's who they are. They're physical. They're strong. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Montana State here in this one, Craig. And, uh, you know, although Weber State's done a, a tremendous job, and it's going to, be, it's going to be a tight one, I think, though. Yeah, you know, Weber State's offense seems to be sort of like a, a work in progress in my eyes. You know, has to get a little bit better. Can't really say that about Montana State. I mean, they just roll over you with their running attack. They actually have six guys who have 100-plus rushing yards. They're the number one rate, uh, rushing attack in the FCS. And Sean Chambers is now running it. Tommy Malat's out with an injury. It happened a little bit last year as well. It, there's just no letdown with, with, with their running attack. So I, I agree with you. Uh, Montana State will get this done on the road. Now, we talked about the FedEx Crown FCS Game of the Week earlier, and it is number four, Sacramento State, which is 3-0. At Idaho, number seven, Idaho uh, just suffered an FBS loss. Uh, they already have an FBS win. This is just a tremendous game, Gary. It really is. we got a, a really good game. Sac State, we've talked a lot about them and how powerful they are. Uh, you know, for me, I'm going to go with the guys that, uh, you know, I wrote into last week, and I put them in there that they would beat Cal last week, but it really didn't it didn't happen, but they had a great game. But I'm going to go with Idaho, and I think that Giovanni McCoy is going to have something to say about this when it's all said and done. Got a great receiver in Hayden Hatton to get the ball down to. So I'm all in with the Vandals on this one, Craig. So where are you lying? <laughs> I'm going to back you. I'm going to go Vandals as well. I, I, I do think this is a little bit of a, like, proving ground kind of game. Even though they had the FBS win at, at Nevada, and last year they, they won at, at the Grizz Montana, I do think this game is a little different. They're at home. It's their home opener. I think there's pressure on Idaho here because they were sort of an off-season darling where a lot of people focused on them saying, hey, this is a dark horse team. And you know about Giovanni McCoy and, and, and you know, uh, Coach Eck also has Hayden Hatton, you know, maybe the best receiver in the nation. I just think Sac State's the defending champ, two-time defending champ. They also won uh, in 2019. I just think it's a little bit of a proven ground for Idaho. I do think they're tougher at home with, with that crowd, and the Kibbe Dome should be rocking and, and sold out loud. I, you know, I don't really want to go against Sac State because they just just are unbelievable. 22 straight uh, regular season wins and, and long winning streak in the in the Big Sky. I believe it's 19. But I'm going to go with, with, with Idaho as well, Gary. That's our FedEx Ground FCS Game of the Week, and it is just a showstopper, Gary. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. I think the, I think the Coach Eck is going to get the guys ready to go, and, uh, and that's going to be a fun game to watch. I think I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to tune into that one, uh, get my football weekend started here. <laughs> well, week four is going to be great because we mentioned how much you know conference play really takes off here, and the Big Sky really has it going. So that brings an, uh, an end to our episode, Gary. This is uh, week four of the regular season, our eighth podcast already because we started early in the preseason. Thanks to FedEx Ground for, for and, and Stats Perform for, for bringing uh, FCS delivered here each week. Seth Biley and Graham Bell are our producers getting it done. And, and as you mentioned, Seth made the trip with you to Carbondale. Gary, conference play is underway this week. When you were at Northwestern State, what did you think of conference rivals? Well, when I was at Northwestern State, we were actually FCS or Division One AA Independence, Craig. So we played an independent schedule, but we played all of the Louisiana schools. They're now it's Louisiana Lafayette, Louisiana Tech. We also played um, McNeese, and you know those, those are the schools that were kind of rivals. And then Stephen F. Austin in Texas, Abilene Christian. Those are the schools that were all around us that we play, and they still play today uh, in some level. So. All of those 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 teams are games and teams are meaningful, and those are ones that you love to play. And everyone that you get in conference, though, is now 
with Northwestern State there in the Southland Conference. They'll play all of those teams, and and uh, they'll they'll have the same takeaways that I have is that uh, they're they're tough to tough to win, but happy when you do get that W. <laughs> so as an independent, you didn't necessarily like any of your opponents. You were out to win week to week, then, huh? <laughs> yeah, every week because it because it meant something. So way, even way back when that was there was still opportunity to get into the the FCS playoffs as a as an independent. So that that was kind of our goal. Okay, well, thank you to all our, our, our listeners and, and viewers on, on uh, YouTube as well. This has been uh, another episode of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. Looking forward to the games this weekend, Gary. Looking forward to find out where's Gary next week with the FCS on-campus visits. We'll be seeing you soon, and thank you for tuning in to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground.